Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll be covering the control of blood pressure and blood flow. Blood pressure is regulated through the actions of various negative feedback systems that make slow or rapid adjustments to heart rate, stroke volume, blood volume, and systemic vascular resistance. The distribution of blood flow is also adjusted to redirect blood to areas where it is most needed, such as during exercise when more blood is circulated to the skeletal muscles. We've already learned that the cardiovascular center, which we'll abbreviate as the CV center, located in the medulla oblongata of the brainstem, is involved in the regulation of heart rate and stroke volume. Additionally, the CV center helps control the nervous, endocrine, and negative feedback systems that regulate blood pressure and blood flow. There are collections of neurons within the CV center that regulate things like heart rates, force of contraction, which we know as contractility, and blood vessel diameter. We're going to consider all of these neurons as part of one group, the CV center, but it's important to know that there are several subsets of neurons in the CV center that perform specific functions. Some neurons form a cardiostimulatory center that stimulates the heart, while others are part of a cardio-inhibitory center that inhibits the heart's activity. Others are part of a vasomotor center that controls the diameter of blood vessels. Some are parts of a vasoconstrictor center that trigger blood vessel constriction, while other neurons are part of a vasodilator center that causes vasodilation of the blood vessels. In an earlier podcast, we learned that the CV center takes in a variety of information via input from higher brain centers like the cerebral cortex, the limbic system, and the hypothalamus, as well as different types of sensory receptors. The proprioceptors monitor joint and muscle movements during physical activity and send input through nerve impulses to the CV center, which responds by increasing heart rate at the start of exercise. The baroreceptors monitor changes in blood pressure and the degree of stretch in the walls of blood vessels. Chemoreceptors monitor the chemical concentration within the blood, in particular hydrogen ions, carbon dioxide levels, and oxygen gas. The CV center then sends outputs that moves through the opposing sympathetic or stimulatory and parasympathetic or inhibitory divisions of the autonomic nervous system. The cardiac accelerator nerves relay sympathetic impulses to the heart, which help stimulate and increase heart rates and contractility. And likewise, a decrease in sympathetic impulses will decrease heart rate and contractility. The vagus nerves, which is cranial nerve 10, carry parasympathetic impulses, which will inhibit and decrease heart rates. Impulses are also sent out of the CV center through the spinal cord to smooth muscle in the blood vessel walls through the vasomotor nerves. These nerves are part of the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. They send impulses to the body's blood vessels, especially arterioles in the abdominal organs and skin. As the smooth muscles in their walls contract, they maintain a steady state of vasoconstriction called vasomotor tone that provides a normal resting level of vascular resistance. 
The vasoconstriction of veins can help increase blood pressure and send blood out of the venous blood reservoirs to other areas of the body. There are two types of reflexes that the nervous system uses to regulate blood pressure through negative feedback loops. Baroreceptor reflexes and chemoreceptor reflexes. Baroreceptors are found in various large diameter arteries in the chest and neck, including the aorta and the internal carotid arteries of the neck that deliver blood to the brain. They detect changes in blood pressure and send input to the cardiovascular center. Two important baroreceptor reflexes are the carotid sinus reflex and the aortic reflex. The carotid sinus reflex involves baroreceptors in the wall of the carotid sinuses that help regulate blood pressure in the brain. The carotid sinuses are wider regions of the right and left internal carotid arteries. As blood flows through them, the blood pressure pushes against the walls of the sinuses, stimulating the baroreceptors. Impulses travel away from the carotid sinuses through sensory neurons in the glossopharyngeal nerves, which is cranial nerve 9, to the CV center. The ascending aorta and arch of the aorta contain baroreceptors that trigger the aortic reflex, which is involved in systemic blood pressure regulation. Sensory neurons of the vagus nerves, which is cranial nerve 10, carry impulses from the aortic baroreceptors into the CV center. The baroreceptors stretch more when blood pressure is higher and send impulses to the CV center at a faster rate and they are stretched less when blood pressure is lower and send impulses at a slower rate. When there is a drop in blood pressure, the CV center slows down parasympathetic stimulation of the heart through motor axons of the vagus nerve and increases sympathetic stimulation through the cardiac accelerator nerves. As heart rate and contractility increase, cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance increases and ultimately blood pressure returns back to normal. The chemoreceptors are organized into clusters called carotid bodies which are located near the carotid sinus and aortic bodies found near the aortic sinus. They're able to detect changes in blood levels of certain chemicals including oxygen gas, carbon dioxide, and hydrogen ions. Low blood oxygen called hypoxia, high hydrogen ion concentration acidosis, and high carbon dioxide levels, hypercapnia, trigger the chemoreceptors to transmit impulses to the CV center, which then increases sympathetic stimulation to the arterioles and veins, resulting in more vasoconstriction and an increase in blood pressure. Blood pressure and blood flow are also regulated through the endocrine system via hormone secretion. These hormones are capable of adjusting cardiac output, systemic vascular resistance, and total blood volume. Hormones that play a role in this include the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, abbreviated RAA as well as the hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine, antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, and atrial natriuretic peptide, or ANP. Let's consider the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system first. The kidneys are able to detect a drop in blood volume or blood flow 
When this happens, juxtaglomerular cells within the kidneys secrete the hormone renin into the blood. You can think of the phrase, renin is running throughout the bloodstream. Renin, along with an enzyme, produces the active hormone angiotensin II that is able to increase blood pressure, and it does this through triggering vasoconstriction, which increases systemic vascular resistance, which increases blood pressure. It also leads to the secretion of the hormone aldosterone from the adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys, which enhances the kidney's absorption of sodium ions and water, leading to an increase in total blood volume and an increase in blood pressure. The adrenal gland also releases the hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine upon sympathetic stimulation, which increases heart rate and contractility, which leads to an increase in cardiac output and blood pressure. They also help to increase blood flow to skeletal muscles during exercise by triggering vasoconstriction in the arterioles and veins of the skin and abdominal organs and vasodilation of the arterioles in cardiac and skeletal muscle tissue. Antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, is made in the hypothalamus of the brain and released by the posterior pituitary gland when the body is dehydrated or there is a lower blood volume. ADH results in vasoconstriction, which leads to an increase in blood pressure. ADH is also known by the name vasopressin because of this function. ADH plays another role in helping to promote the reabsorption of water from the kidneys into the blood. This has an overall effect on increasing blood volume and reducing the output of urine. Atrial natriuretic peptide is a hormone secreted by the atrial wall of the heart. It triggers vasodilation, which helps to lower blood pressure, as well as increasing the loss of sodium ions and water in the urine, which has an overall effect of decreasing blood volume. Tissues are also able to make adjustments to increase or decrease their blood flow in order to meet their particular metabolic demands in a process called autoregulation. It is a very important feature in tissues that have high metabolic demands, especially during physical activity, such as cardiac and skeletal muscle tissue, as well as regulating blood flow to the brain. Tissues perform this self-maintenance through regulating vasomotion through their capillary beds by vasoconstriction and vasodilation of their arterioles. Vasodilation promotes blood flow through the capillaries, supplying oxygen and nutrients to its tissues, where vasoconstriction does the opposite. Autoregulation is stimulated by physical changes to the body and also by chemicals that promote vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Physical changes, like changes in temperature, trigger autoregulation. Higher temperatures cause vasodilation, while lower temperatures trigger vasoconstriction. The smooth muscle tissue in the arterial wall also display a myogenic response where it strongly contracts when stretched and relaxes when the degree of stretch is reduced. When blood flow through an arterial decreases, the degree of stretch in the wall decreases, which leads to a relaxation of the wall smooth muscle. This results in vasodilation of the arterial and an increase in blood flow. An assortment of chemicals that trigger vasodilation and vasoconstriction are released by a range of cells including smooth muscle fibers, white blood cells, platelets, and endothelial cells lining the blood vessels. Chemicals released by these cells that trigger vasodilation include potassium ions, hydrogen ions, lactic acid, adenosine from ATP, and nitric oxide.
When tissue cells are injured or inflamed, they release other vasodilators, such as histamines and kinins. Chemicals that trigger vasoconstriction include thromboxane A2, superoxide radicals, serotonin, and endothelins.